Greetings, everyone. Today, we delve into the dietary habits of the ancient Sumerians and Akkadians. Picture a scorching desert region encompassing present-day Iraq, northeast Syria, eastern Iran, and southern Turkey, spanning an expansive area of approximately 155,000 square miles. Here, you won't find trees, stones, copper, or tin. However, amidst this landscape reside the diligent and persevering Sumerians, characterized by their dark hair. The region boasts an abundance of clay, reed, and two rivers, Euphrates and Tigris, flowing from the Armenian highlands. These rivers carry nutrient-rich sediment and mineral salts, nurturing remarkably fertile soil in their delta regions. Lush, marshy meadows serve as pastures for livestock. To thrive, the Sumerians mastered the art of constructing canals and dams. They know how to transcend the whims of nature and river floods. For three millennia, hunger was a rare occurrence. Sumerian merchants threw the sale of surplus barley, dates, lentils, legumes, oil, spices, ceramics, and textiles, procured all necessary materials and resources. The kingdom of Sumer and Akkad flourished. Let us now wander through the bustling market and explore the offerings available for purchase. Yes, purchase, not barter. The Sumerians utilized rings and ingots made of copper, lead, silver, and gold as currency. The Sumerians employed a sexagesimal numeral system, as seen in the division of circles into 360 degrees hours into 60 minutes, and minutes into 60 seconds. The system still utilized by modern-day programmers. First, let us acquaint ourselves with units of weight and volume which are crucial when navigating the market. Upon entering the market, resounding voices beckon us to acquire 60 sila or 13 gallons of barley for a mere shekel. It is equivalent to approximately one-third of ounces of silver. Barley, arguably the staple crop of the Sumerians, is sold in sizable reed baskets and containers. Half of the harvested barley supplies numerous breweries across the land, while the remainder finds its way to temples and the marketplace. Wheat, millet, and oats are also available in ceramic jugs, albeit at higher prices. Adjacent to the market lies a sprawling courtyard where animals are traded. Regular sheep and goats fetch two shekels each, while curly and mountain sheep demand a higher price. A pair of domestic ducks can be obtained for one shekel, while a fully grown pig commands five shekels. For a young bull or cow, the asking price is ten shekels, whereas a single ox or breeding bull costs thirty shekel. In addition to fresh meat, the market offers salted and sun-dried varieties, imported from distant lands. Further along, we encounter stalls showcasing the spoils of hunters. Pigeons, wild ducks, geese, rabbits, boars, deer, snakes, and turtles. Prices in this section are steep, and buyers are scarce. Only affluent townsfolk, clad in fringed tunics, make these purchases. Slaves, recognizable by their loincloths, congregate near sacks of locusts. However, the fishmonger stall attracts a considerable crowd predominantly composed of free citizens draped in skirts and cloaks. Fish holds a symbolic significance of prosperity for the Sumerians, depicted by the fish symbol. Fishermen known as Shukudak and Sumerian were deemed fortunate individuals. It was said among the people, no matter the changes occurring in the city, the fisherman will always sustain himself. The array of offerings at the fish stalls is extensive, encompassing over 50 varieties of freshwater, lake, and sea fish, as well as mollusks and crustaceans. The least expensive option is carp, cultivated in marshy meadows and among palm trees along the canals. The priciest commodities at the stall comprise fish and mollusks sourced from the lower sea, Persian Gulf, as well as dried and salted fish from the city, state of Errata on the Caspian Sea. The market buzzes with activity and no one departs empty-handed. As we continue our meandering journey through the market, we encounter rows brimming with aromatic spices and vegetable oils. Coriander, mustard, cumin, caraway, saffron, rosemary, mint, sesame oil, sesame seeds, and salt. 
Beyond the spice stalls lie the dairy displays, showcasing milk and an astonishing 18 varieties of cheeses. Astounding, isn't it? Now, let us direct our attention to the rows dedicated to bread. Prepare to be amazed, for the Sumerians boasted an impressive repertoire of approximately 300 bread types. These breads were crafted from various flours ground to different textures and leavened using diverse methods such as milk or beer. Their offerings included sweet bread, spicy bread, fruit-filled bread, flavored bread, and even bread molded in the shape of a woman's breast. The Sumerians were esteemed connoisseurs and aesthetes who believed that food should first please the eyes before satisfying the palate. The chefs, referred to as Nuhadamu in Sumerian inscriptions, enjoyed high regard and exemption from military service, even during city sieges. Now, let us venture into the square adorned with date palms. Dates, akin to grains, were dubbed Sumerian gold by neighboring nations. Fresh, dried, sun-dried in porridge form, and even as date wine, they graced the market. Adjacent to the date stalls, we encounter vendors selling nuts, honey, and dried fruits. As it is the month of Nusan, fresh fruits are yet to arrive, but soon apples, pears, plums, peaches, figs, and melons will make their appearance. Exiting the market, we are greeted by rows teeming with vegetables and mushrooms, chickpeas, lentils, turnips, various cucumber varieties, lettuce, hops, watercress, ramsons, and mushroom. Undeniably, this people attained their pinnacle of development and prosperity under the godlike ruler Shulgi Sin. The king of Sumer and Akkad was immortalized during his lifetime as the bird Imdugad, an eagle with a lion's head. While this paints a beautiful picture, the kingdom of Sumer and Akkad did not experience unbridled bliss. Did you know the average life expectancy of the Sumerians was a mere 40 years? Yet the circumstances for the elite and kings differed significantly. The king's list includes an intriguing entry. Sargon, whose father was a gardener, became a cup-bearer of Ur-Zababa, king of Agade, ruled as a king for 56 years. This notable figure is none other than Sargon the Great. He lived twice as long as the average person of that era. What could be the secret to the king's longevity? In the forthcoming episode, we shall delve into the intricacies of the clay, copper, silver, and gold vessels used by the ancient Sumerians and Akkadians. With that, I bid you farewell. Stay in good health and take care of yourselves.